Hey everyone, this is Stan Heller with VectorVest Canada. In this short video, I want to show you how you can profit from index tracking ETFs, and I'll show you how to set it up in a watch list and also a performance graph. So let's get started. And uh, before we begin, just know there is risk in investing, and everything you will see in here today is for educational purposes only and should never be considered as investment advice. So what we're going to cover today is how to create a watch list of important index tracking ETFs. These are going to be Canadian market ETFs, but just know that every VectorVest country or market has index tracking ETFs, so you can set it up the same way. Show you how to analyze the ETFs on a daily graph and then how to analyze and compare the ETFs in a performance graph so we can very visually see the trends and which of the ETFs is moving up and which ETF might be moving down. And then we can also run quick tests to analyze the performance over specific periods of time. All right, so with that, these are the ETFs that we're going to use for the Canadian market. So these all trade on the Canadian market, but you'll see that XQQ actually tracks the NASDAQ 100 on the U.S. market. So we can trade the XQQ and not have any of the currency risk with tracking the performance of the NASDAQ 100. Similarly, the S&P 500 XSP and the Russell 2000 XSU. And then we have the XIC, which is tracking the TSX Composite Index and the XIU, which tracks the TSX 60. And finally, the CDNX, which tracks the Venture Exchange stocks. Just know that this one does not trade on its own, but it's a great way to track the Venture and then if you find uh, the venture is moving up with the CDNX moving up strongly, you can go to the watch list viewer and, for example, select the TSX Venture 50 and find out which stocks are moving that index higher. The graph setup that I like to use is pretty simple. It's got a 40-day moving average running through the top of the price graph. And below that, the teal line is the VectorVest stop price. So the stop price is your line in the sand exit when price closes below this teal line or the VectorVest stop price. It is time to take action and potentially exit the position or at least be aware that it has been falling over a period of considerable time. And in the subgraph below, I've got a 40-day moving average of our relative timing or RT indicator. It's a very fast indicator on its own, but I smooth it out and slow it down with a 40-day moving average. And when it's rising and price is rising above the 40-day, everything is pointed toward 2 o'clock. That's a great time to be in these ETFs. And when it peaks and starts to fall, we need to be a little bit more cautious. And if price falls below the 40-day moving average, that's an early warning. If it falls below the stop price in teal, then we want to exit that position. As it falls and falls and falls into a valley and starts to flatten out on the 40-day moving average of RT, that can present another buying opportunity. And in this case, it happened here, did pull back again a little bit, but then we went right on straight up the page toward the two o'clock. So that's a simple daily graph layout. And then I'll show you how to set up a performance graph uh, right from the VectorVest platform. And I've used the dotted lines for the US index tracking ETFs and then uh, the straight lines for the Canadian tracking ETFs and over one month you can see that there's starting to show some weakness in the performance graph. However, we can see that um, 
the XQQ at the top here over the one month, the NASDAQ is starting to really outperform the other indexes or indices again. All right, so with that, I'm going to take us into the program and we can set this up and then I'll show you the performance table using quick tests when we finish up. So just to show you the setup of this, And before I do, I'm just going to go back to this slide and I'll go into the program now and set this up. So I'm going to go to the watch list viewer under the viewers tab. So here it is here and I'll set up a new group. This is a master folder for these ETFs. So I'll just set it up here. It opens up a new graph window for me or new window and uh, I'll just give this folder a name and we'll call it whoops index tracking ETFs so that'll be our master folder should drop it down to the bottom of our graphs over here at the left and from there I need to create a watch list under that folder so I just left click on this drop down arrow again Click on New Watch List, pull that window down again, and index, oops, index tracking ETFs. And I could put the date in there or any other description in there as well. Oops, we've already got that name, so I'll just call it July 2021. There we go. Click on Add. And now we're ready to add those symbols and I'm going to add them here. So um, I'll just go XQQ for the first one, tracking the NASDAQ 100. Now I can separate them by a comma. XIC is the next one in my list, XIU. XDV is the Dow Dividend Tracking Indice. So we'll plug that in. XSP is the S&P 500. XSU is the Russell 2000. And there's the CDNX. So the nice thing is you can get the benefit of investing in these U.S. markets, the broad market, without taking on any of the currency risk with the by having to purchase them in U.S. dollars. We would trade these in the Canadian dollars in the Canadian share market. And I'll just right click and auto fit the columns. Just to make sure you understand um, what the ETF is tracking, it's always, and whether it's leveraged or regular, always a good idea to right click on any highlighted ETF, view the stock analysis report, and I'll pull that down into this page. So here is the um, TSX, it's the capped composite index fund. It tells you uh, that it's managed by Barclays, shows you on the graph how well it's been performing over the last three months. And it shows you how this index tracking um, watch list is, has been doing. So we have a three month window on the industry, the index tracking industry ETFs, and then the stock graph itself. So with that, very easy to graph them with a simple layout. You can add a 40 day moving average if it's, uh, actually if you start with the graph layouts and just select vector vest layout, it's going to give you the 40 day moving average running through the price. At the top here is the relative timing indicator just on its own and you can see it's quite a fast indicator I'll just make it a line but typically when it's above one that can be a very good entry and when you have it above one and also crossing above the 40-day moving average that can be a very strong entry and as we start to see it lose momentum as it does here at the top even before price loses momentum, that can be an early warning. What I like to do is just put on a moving average of that RT to smooth it out 
So we'll right click, add moving average, simple, make it a 40 day moving average. Left click to highlight it and we'll change the type to an area. And so now I've got an area graph of it as well. And I can take off the RT on its own or leave it on, but I'll take it off. So you can see as the 40 day moving average of RT is falling, price is losing momentum. So we don't want to be adding shares and we might get ready to, to sell as well. As it starts to move higher, it's a good time to come into that position. This is the C CDNX or the Venture Exchange. And then it peaks out and starts to lose momentum and fall. And we're out again. And we can come back in when this starts to rise again. We can add the stop price. Vectivest has a stop price for every stock. Now I'll go back a ways. And it's your line in the sand. When price is crossed below the stop price and closed below it, that is kind of your line in the sand to take some action and get out of the position and avoid all this pain uh, that happened in this instance due to the COVID uh, pandemic. And then we get ready to buy again when everything is moving up. You can wait for the buy recommendation of VectorVest or you can come in a little bit earlier when price is above the 40 day moving average and starting to rise from there. And we see the 40 day moving average of RT rising as well. So that's a simple layout, very easy to follow it along. Dividend payers have uh, really been um, in favor recently. And you can see that this is all from the confirmed up call on November 11th. This was one of our better performing ETFs. A little bit of whipsaw going on prior to that indecision in the marketplace. But here you can see the 40 day moving average of RT really getting nicely above one and holding and staying up there for the whole time. Similarly for the TSX 30, or sorry, the TSX 60. The NASDAQ, a little bit of uh, turmoil here or volatility in the um, March, April period of 2021. And you cross below the 40 day, which is a pretty strong warning. Never got a sell rating, didn't, didn't ever close below the stop price. But there were some warnings. You certainly don't want to be adding positions when price is below the 40 day moving average and price or the 40 day moving average of RT is also falling. All right, so that's another look. There's the S&P 500. And again, you can trade this in Canadian dollars. So a nice benefit there with ETFs. You don't have the risk of an earnings miss, for example, with one or two stocks. Um, we can absorb that with an ETF and pretty good approach to investing. And right from here, you can go to a performance graph. Just come to the drop down arrow at the top left, go on the performance graph. Here's how XSP has been doing in relation to the ETFs index tracking basket, all of them. But I'll just take that off and actually I'll come up to graph layouts. I've saved this already. And it's, I just call it the CA slash US index tracking. And I've got my colors the way I like them. Notice on the right, this is the percentage gain or loss. So these are all positive uh, percent gains over a one year time period. The dotted lines are the uh, US indices in, in my setup here. And I just set that up, for example, XSU. If I change the style, you'll notice I've selected the blue color and I've got a wider width to it. And I've selected dotted as opposed to solid. Whoops. And then the Canadian ETFs I have in solid. And the best view might be the one month view, for example. And you can see the NASDAQ ETF. Um, XQQ 
performing extremely well. All the other indices starting to turn down. So it's a, it's a great indicator of trend as well as um, sort of the percent gain over a period of time. Here's the three month view where the Canadian ETFs are up at the top, but um, all turning down at the moment. And as we get into six months, you can see um, the dividend pairs, the XDV outperforming all the others. When you go to a five year, for example, it's going to change to a weekly view, weekly graph view. And um, now you can see clearly that the NASDAQ um, has been far and away the top performer. And when it starts to rise like this, you can jump on board with the ETF or look for NASDAQ stocks that are leading the NASDAQ higher. And actually all of the US ETFs, the three of them are outperforming the Canadian ETFs here at the bottom. But they've all done, done well since January 2020. And to have a look at that, let's go back to our slides. And here is the performance. So VectorVest in Canada signaled a confirmed up call on November 11th, 2020. And from there to Friday, July 2nd, you can see the Venture Exchange was up 32%. The Russell 2000 XSU ETF up 31%. Here's those dividend payers in Canada up 26.8%. And the NASDAQ 100 up 23. The S&P 500 hedged up 20%. The TSX 60, um, a strong basket of benchmark TSX stocks up 20% and the Canadian composite up 20%. And here it is over five years. And this is where the NASDAQ has really shone up 214% over five years. Pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, but all the ETFs have performed quite well over that time period. Here's the three month and the one month performance as well. So those are simply quick tests. You can run those from the VectorVest uh, software over any time frame. Here I've got them in a watch list so I can just come up to quick test all. And for example, if I want to take it back to that confirmed up call, I can change our quick dates to the confirmed calls here. And then I just go back till I see the green light in the dates and there it is and i'll go i'll bring it up to july 8th now since i'm doing this video on july 8th and i'm ready to run the test so it's just a quick test performance from point a to point b and here's how it stands as of thursday july 8th so xsu right up at the uh, at the top here that's the Russell 2000, 27%, the Venture Exchange, 26 and on down it goes. All right, I hope this was helpful to you. If you like this kind of content from VectorVest, please uh, click on the like button. Whoops, there we go. <laughs> click on the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel, and that'll bring more viewers to our presentations, and uh, that helps everybody. If you have any questions, about setting any of this up, or if you want to take a trial to the VectorVest program, we do have a special rate on for a 30-day uh, trial. You can just call 188-658-7638. Thank you very much for watching.